You ever wondered about bokeh or boca, whatever you like to call it? You ever wondered how good the Z50 1.2 bokeh is compared to your standard Nikon lens? Do you think it's worth it to spend big bucks on a monster lens like this versus just your standard without spending much money? What the differences are? What the bokeh differences are? Well, in this video, we're gonna have some fun. In this video, we're gonna find out. Let's go rock and roll. What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagan, your rock and roll photographer. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Okay, we're gonna put the 51.2. S Z lens up against your normal standard 24 to 70 zoom lens. We're going to shoot the standard lens at around 50 millimeters wide open. This is a 24 to 70 F4 lens, standard 500 to 900 dollar lens. A lot of Z photographers own this lens. By the way, it's a great lens. But how much of a difference? is buying the premium 51.2 Z lens when it comes to sharpness and when it comes to why we buy a 1.2 lens, the speed, the amount of light, the background blur, what the differences are. In this video, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna see the difference. I'm gonna shoot the 50 1.2 S lens wide open. I'm going to shoot the F4 wide open. We're going to see the differences, both photo and video. The 51.2, this is a monster, monster lens, guys. And the Z9 is here with me. And by the way, guys, this is the fastest autofocus Z lens that Nikon makes right now. We're all waiting for the 85.12. Hasn't been announced yet. It's on the roadmap. However, this is what we got right now. So I get this question asked all the time. Should I spend big bucks? And what are the differences in bokeh? Those photographers that say, I'm good with this lens. I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend big bucks. What do you really get spending $2,000 plus shooting it wide open at 1.2 that you don't get shooting the F4? So let's just have fun with it, guys. Nothing too technical, nothing over the top. Just a simple video showing you results using these two lenses you guys ready let's go let's go out and about let's shoot and i'll meet you back right here when you're done looking at the samples let's go before i show you the sample videos and photos in this review the 50 millimeter 1.2 s i'll be using the nikon z9 the 2470 the nikon z6 all files are not color graded or edited they're unedited jpeg files straight from the camera both cameras set to nl picture profile and we'll be seeing the differences between a 45 megapixel sensor and a 24 megapixel sensor. First up on the screen, I'm shooting video with a 2470. Watch what happens when I shoot it one, two on the other lens. The bokeh, the bokeh difference is apparent. And this is the whole goal of this video for you to see the differences. And by the way, the Z9, I'm shooting 4K 30 frames per second, 10 bit H265. The Z6, 30 frames per second, 4K 8 bit H264. I'm keeping the same amount of distance while shooting both cameras. The autofocus is doing a great job on both samples as well, but you can see the difference when shooting at 1.2 versus f4 on the other lens. Now moving on to some still images, look at the difference when I shoot at 1.2 with the other lens. It's isolating that subject, I'm focusing right on that pot here. Let's zoom in and see the sharpness detail. So not only is this video turned into a 1.2 versus f4 expensive lens versus average lens comparison. You can also see the differences between a Z6 and a Z9, the way both images are rendered. And by the way, I have both cameras set on an identical Kelvin temperature. So we see the differences in white balance as well. Look at the differences between background blur with both examples here. Let me show you two images side by side so you can see both on the screen. So this next set of examples, I have the camera set on small area AF on video mode. I wanted to see how it would track and change the background blur and how it would track from the foreground to the background. 
Now let's switch over to the Z9 and do the same thing. First of all, the background blur is a big difference there. But what I noticed on the Z9 and the 50, the 24 to 70 was a little faster to focus on the background while the Z9 took a little bit of time to focus. Now, I don't know if this is a setting internal with the camera, if I could speed things up, but I noticed a big difference in that department. I also noticed that the 1.2 is a little slower to focus than the 24 to 70 F4. That's probably because of all the glass that's incorporated in the more expensive lens. Just a little hair faster, not by much. This next example, I wanted to focus on the trees and have my subject a little bit further away just to see if we see any subject isolation differences with subjects further away. Next up, let me get in close to this fence pole shot at f4 with the 2470. Now watch what happens shot at 1.2 with the Z9 with the 50 millimeter. Pay attention to the background. Look at the wood posts. Look at the backdrop here. And when you shoot at 1.2, it's like art you know it disintegrates the background look at the trees in the back with the f4 and now at one two big difference i really like the way the 51 2 renders just look at that it looks like a work of art it looks like a painting almost now the next example i want to show you is both lenses shot at f4 so you can see the difference in sharpness maybe and when i say maybe there is actually no difference in this example i mean when you shoot at f4 both lenses different cameras there's hardly any difference that i see and this is a true testament to nikon and what they're doing you buy a one two to shoot it at one two as i show you the sample when i'm racking focus on both lenses here let me just go over why the advantages of a one two lens is so so crucial Number one, one, two, shooting and having that beautiful background blur, bouquet, and also the ability to gather more light in your sensor, shooting in dark locations. You'll have the upper hand shooting with the faster lens in low light situations and better subject isolation, of course. So there's a reason why you're paying the big bucks and the lens is a lot larger. And also in most cases, when you stop down a one, two lens to, for example, a two, eight lens, your results will be sharper and better with a more expensive lens. Now this example, I'm shooting it at f8, both examples. Let's zoom in here to that house. You don't see much of a difference until you get to pixel peeping status, which I had to zoom in heavily crop. Now you see the differences between a 45 megapixel Z9 with a more expensive lens and a Z6 with a 24 megapixel sensor and the 24 to 70 1000 dollars lens. And by the way, guys, I'm shooting the 24 to 70 at 50 millimeters. And again, guys, in case you're wondering why I'm comparing a 24 to 70 zoom lens with a 50 millimeter prime, I get this email all the time. I'll just use a 24 to 70 at 50 millimeters and it'll give you the results that I want. Well, look at this result. Look at the background blur. This example shows Shows just how special the 50 millimeter 1.2 lens is just look at that all right everyone welcome back so you see the results there is a lot of difference you buy the 51 2 to shoot it wide open at 1.2 sure you could stop it down but this lens the 51 2 s z lens is very very sharp i love the results you get you can throw on an nd filter and, and shoot video out and about i love the background blur you get with this lens this lens is no slouch either, guys. The 24 to 70 f4 is really a lens that I recommend to every Z user right now. Every Z mount Nikon user should have this lens in the bag. It's a great lens, doesn't cost that much money. Of course, the differences are big. You know, you're shooting at 1.2 versus f4. The bokeh difference is huge. However, if you, like I said, zoom in to 70, depending on how close you are to the subject, you can still achieve really good results bokeh-wise with the standard 24 to 70 lens. Quick note, I do want to get the 24 to 120 one day, and that lens is on my, my personal roadmap. I love both these lenses, and hopefully this video just answered some of you guys' questions, some of the emails I get, hopefully this video helped out all right guys so if you like content like this one you know what to do if this is your first time here i'd love a subscription please subscribe to vahography it motivates me to keep going and making these videos for you guys so if you if you like this if it helped out if you like videos about photography subscribe and hit that thumbs up button because you know what youtube 
it helps with the YouTube algorithms, guys. So I'll appreciate that as well. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the next video. Be good, stay safe, and rock and roll when you're out there taking the pictures. Have a good time and enjoy the process. Rock and roll. Hey, what's good, guys? Vahagan here from Vahography. If you like more photography, rocking content like this one, go ahead and check out the videos on the screen and subscribe to this channel for more exclusive content.